Welcome to our Street View episode for December 2018. We're going to jump right into the Toronto real estate results. We're also going to cover off one of our brand new listings coming up for 2019. And of course, we want to have a holiday best wishes. So let's get started. The simple recipe of supply plus demand equals the results that we experience. Let's take a look at what happened in November for 2018. We can see that the number of new listings, uh, the supply side, was down 26%. And when you look at the, the, the bar graph, you come over to the right hand side, month of November, orange bars this year, yellow bar 2017, and then the two prior years. And we can see how 2017 really sticks out. Why were so many listings coming to market at that time? Well, uh, there was a little surge in the market at the end of last year that had to do with the regulating uh, changes inside the mortgage lending rules, the stress test. If you're not familiar with it, it means that you have to qualify for a much higher interest rate than what you'll actually be getting when you buy a house and get a mortgage. So for someone that's in that process of buying or shopping, it means that there was an emphasis to get something bought before the end of the year. That's part of the influence. The other part of the influence were the interest rate increases we were seeing at that time. And the Bank of Canada was doing their best to control inflation and to, you know, the health of the market was returning and, you know, other factors, our dollar uh, with exchange rates. So there were two interest rate increases, one in July, one in September in 2017. So the mood of the market last year was, hey, better do something now before interest rates go up anymore. Now, since that time, interest rates have gone up three more times. And as we stand today, that's really impacting affordability. And there's a broader picture there. But are we set for further interest rate increases? The month of November actually had a very low inflationary number of 1.7%, actually one of the lowest of this year. It matches with January earlier in the year. So the Bank of Canada is not really inclined to make a further shift on interest rates, but it's early days yet. Um, but affordability uh, has been significantly impacted by five interest rate increases um, since July 2017. So that's part of the story as well. So then when we start to look at the sales side of thing, which is uh, uh, of the market, which is uh, the demand, illustrates the demand, we can see that year over year, the month of November, sales were down 14.7%. And so once again, a similar story um, that sales were spiking up, new listings were spiking up last year. Um, and then there's the question of how it all relates to price. Um, I would also say that when we add up the whole year and compare it to last year at this time, the market's down actually a little bit more, 15.8% overall, meaning there's almost 16% fewer transactions happening in the month of, I'm sorry, in the year of 2018. And once again, that's an affordability story um, that uh, people are just getting squeezed out. Mortgage qualification rules are a little bit tighter, et cetera. So price, price is up overall 3.5%. And we've been talking about affordability, uh, which is the key driver for sure. And so we'll flip the uh, affordability chart up there. And we can see how this works off of three metrics. Average price of a house, interest rate costs, and what average income is going on in the GTA. So if income growth goes up, the affordability index goes down. If the price of a home goes up, the affordability index goes up. If interest rates go up, and correspondingly uh, mortgage costs go up, the index goes up. So you have these impacts. Now we talked about five interest rate increases. What did that do to the index? Took it higher. What have home prices been doing since we've been talking all year long? They've slowly been ticking up. Even though we had a correction in, um, in 2017, it's the affordability side of things. Even though price isn't quite where it was in the peak of April 2017, the five interest rate increases have created the same net effect. So that is a fundamental. And uh, with our economy being where it is, I'm not so sure that the affordability is gonna move that much. And with that, I think price growth is going to continue to be moderate. And we've talked about this, my estimation typically in that four to 6% range, and we're sitting at 3.5, very close to that number. So the affordability is a great uh, story. Next. Uh, let's move right on to uh, sales and average price on different home types in both the 416 and the 905. This is one of my personal faves because uh, we can see more intricately what's going on and you can dial in 
to whether you live in 905 or 416 and uh, what kind of home that you own and see what's going on there. And what I would emphasize is we focus on average price. We can see how on a sales scenario, like you know, the number of sales on the left side there, everything's down, right? Understandably. But on the right hand side, we can see what's happening with price. And so the uh, shining stars out of that is semi-detached in the 416 year over year up 17.2%, which sounds like a really big number. And it is kind of a big number. And then in condo apartments, it's continuing at a 7% rate growth. So um, both of them very, very significant numbers. Um, and uh, you know, we can see detached homes modestly 1.8% and townhouses down 2.9% in the 416. But you can slide over to the 905 and see correspondingly what's going on there. Um, and I thought what might be helpful, this is a brand new slide you guys have never seen before. And I think it's really appropriate to share at this time of the year um, because what it does, and I'm gonna disappear here for a sec, and because it takes up the whole screen um, for you to be able to see it. And I know this looks like a lot of information, but allow me to clarify. What it's doing for us is it's breaking down uh, the different uh, price uh, uh, categories for the different home types right across this entire spectrum. So, and what I wanna draw your eye to is the price ranges between 400,000 right up to a uh, uh, million dollars is where 80% of the market exists. And that even narrow, a little more narrow than that, you can start to see the numbers in the right-hand column where the highest uh, number of transactions are taking place. It's right in that range of 500 to 800,000. And it's literally more than 50%, it's around 50% of the overall market is transacting in that price range. So if you're in the process of shopping for a home and you're in that price range, that's where the, the multiple offers, the competitive side of the market is. Um, and it's just a question of awareness. And if you are higher in, uh, in the market, <coughs> excuse me, you can see how, uh, how the number of transactions changes dramatically as you go through these increments of a quarter million dollars, like a million to a million two fifty, uh, and then a million uh, seven fifty to two million, and how there are actually very few properties that fit that niche. And it's very interesting. And then over two million, that includes everything over two million. Um, so I thought that that's really interesting. The other way I would look is across the bottom, and you can see the percentage of the home types for overall sales results. And I would draw your attention to condo apartment where it represents 29.4% of the overall market. And it's kind of like right in about here. And that is very interesting um, because condo has been this growing segment and will continue to be. And when you look at the average price there of 552,000, it's easy to understand why. Um, that's right inside that target of where the greatest number of transactions are happening. So, and then correspondingly, what's the second, uh, I'm sorry, the most popular housing type is definitely detached. And please remember that these include all of the greater Toronto area. So, you know, this is just somebody coming into the GTA and saying, where can I find a detached house that I can afford? Where can I find a condo I can afford, et cetera. So I thought that you might find that helpful. We have a two bedroom, two bath condo apartment coming up in Corktown. It is a wonderful 850 square foot soft loft with polished concrete floors, 11 foot ceilings, 142 square foot balcony. It's going to be refreshed. I know it doesn't look bad from the picture, but uh, it's just coming out of the rental market and it's going to be completely painted, refreshed, cleaned and staged for the second week of January. We'll be bringing it to market. If you happen to know of somebody that's thinking about buying a condo apartment in Corktown, please have them reach out to us and feel free to share this episode with that party. On behalf of Madeline, myself, and the entire Emerson Group team, we want to wish you the very best for the holiday season and the happiest of New Year's. I've really enjoyed these segments in speaking with all of you and look forward to doing so in the new year. And until then, be well, be safe, and all the best.